Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you our chocolate ganache recipes. So we're going to be making some white chocolate ganache as well as some dark chocolate ganache. Now I must say before we start that there are lots of different ways to make ganache depending on what you're trying to achieve. So some use butter, some use different kind of ratios to what I'm going to show you today. The ganache that I am making is to cover and to fill cakes with. It's perfect to use as your first coat before you apply fondant to your cake. So I'm going to be using some dark chocolate and white chocolate that is Calibo brand. Um, I absolutely love this flavor. I also love the silkiness of it. And I find that it gives me the best overall smooth ganache for my cakes. In the dark chocolate, we're going to be using a ratio of two to one with our cream. That means we've got two parts of our chocolate to one part cream. Now, the cream that you're using will often depend on where you live in the world and what you have access to. Um, I'm using just regular thickened cream. That's something that's readily available where we are. Uh, you can also use a pouring cream and things like that. Um, but you want something that's reasonably runny um, to go into a saucepan and then we're going to warm that up. So now with my Calibo, I'm using the little chocolate chips because it's nice and easy. And the great thing about using the chocolate chips is that all of the chocolate is the same size. That's really key if you're going to take a large slab like we do when we have lots and lots of wedding cake orders um, because you wanna make sure that you've cut them fairly equally. If you have some chocolate that's really quite large and takes longer to melt uh, versus some that's really cut up quite fine, then you're going to find that it's a difficult process to get it to the right temperature because you have that worry of overheating the chocolate quite easily. So for this recipe today, I'm going to be using one kilo of our chocolate both times. So that means for our dark, we need to do 500 mils of our cream. And what we want to do is just pop this onto the stove top. And now you just want to stir it gently from time to time, just to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom at all and that you're getting a nice even temperature. And you're just looking for it to start to bubble along the edges but not do a big bellowing plume in the center. And then you're going to switch it off and you're going to just gently pour it over your chocolate. And what I like to do is give it a good minute just to start dissolving before I stir it with a whisk. And just stir until it's all combined. Don't worry at this point if you still have some little chunks in there. We're going to switch to a spatula and just fold it over to make sure we're getting everything off the bottom. And then I'm going to simply place it over a double boiler. So I have a saucepan underneath that just has a little bit of water in it. And once that starts to just simmer away, it'll slowly heat up the chocolate. Now you wanna to continue to stir this from time to time, just to make sure that you're getting it all off the bottom. And the key is to get it up to the right temperature. So for our dark chocolate, what we're looking for is to get it just above 47 degrees Celsius or 116 degrees Fahrenheit. And getting it above that means that it will be really beautiful ganache when it's done and it will also harden and set a bit for us, which is really, really important when we're doing this kind of ganache to place under cakes. So just placing a candy thermometer in and just continue to scrape away the sides and to check on that temperature. And once it's gotten up to the right temperature, you just want to switch it off. Carefully remove it and just place it onto a tea towel. And you just want to make sure that you've got all of the water off because when you go to tip it into your airtight container, you don't want any of that that's been bellowing around it to actually get into your ganache. 
Now it's really key that you use a well-made airtight Tupperware container to store this because if you get any air in it, it will affect the finished product. So just make sure that you've got one, preferably one that has a nice seal in it just to protect it and make sure. And then just pour it in. Now I'm going to go ahead and make our white chocolate ganache. And to do this, the only thing that changes is the amount of each ingredient and the temperature that we need to get it to. So it's a ratio of three to one this time. And so I'm going to be using a kilo of our white chocolate again, and this time 333 mils of our cream. Now, when we're doing this, we want to get the cream up to the same boiling stage as we did last time. Then we're gonna pour it gently over our white chocolate. And then after giving it a moment just to slowly dissolve itself, you just want to use a whisk to combine them really well. The white can use a little bit of elbow grease at times because it does have a lot less cream in it. And then scrape it off the bottom and all of the edges with a spatula. Pop it over a double boiler, just like you did with the dark chocolate. But this time we only need it to go to 42 degrees Celsius or 107 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it's up to temp, you just wanna go ahead and again place it onto a tea towel just to uh, get rid of all of that excess steam and pour it into an airtight container. And now I'm going to leave this ganache in an airtight container for a day. So what I generally do is I bake my cakes and make the ganache, let them rest overnight. I place the cakes into the fridge, but I leave this out at a nice cool room temperature. That way it will be fully set up by tomorrow and we'll be able to fill our cakes with it.